Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Smith and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, then welcome. I'm so happy you found me. I have a Halloween DIY for you today. In today's crafting adventure, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable trick or treat candy corn wreath. For your convenience, in the description box below is a detailed list of all the tools and materials I used to create this Halloween trick or treat candy corn wreath. Let me show you how to make it. To get started on our Halloween DIY, you're going to need one of the 14 inch wreath forms that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. This one happens to be silver, but it doesn't matter. You can use whatever color you can find. You will also need six packages of the decorative mesh, and each package is six inches by five yards. And then you'll also need a package of white pipe cleaners cut in half. You'll want to reserve a couple uh, full length to do the sign. I have my pipe cleaners, my wreath form, and my mesh is all open. Now I have my mesh here double layered. I'm just going to clean the ends up. It's always nice to start with clean ends. I prefer to use a rotary cutter, but if you don't have one, scissors will do fine as long as they're nice and sharp. I did pick this rotary cutter up at Dollar Tree. It's only $1.25 and I highly recommend it. You can't buy replacement blades for like your Fiskars or anything for $1.25 and this lasts me a good six to eight months, which is really good. Now you wanna take both ends of your mesh and scrunch it together. We're going to be doing the poof method or bubble method. Now that's usually done with 10 inch or 21 inch mesh. This was my solution for using Dollar Tree mesh was to put two together. Now you want to take those ends and secure them with a pipe cleaner. I like to pinch right at the base there and give a good twist. And then you're going to take that and we're going to attach it here to the crossbar to the two bars in the center. Pull it together and give a good twist or two. Pull your pipe cleaners together and then I always push mine forward. Once the wreath is complete you won't see that from the front but that keeps your back nice and clean. Now here on the ends Let's pull those pipe cleaners back. I usually like to double tie down my ends just to make sure that they don't come loose. So I will pull them back through the pipe cleaners. Pull the pipe cleaners nice and tight again and give a double twist. Then you can trim down any excess deco mesh. You still want to leave about a half inch to an inch. But now those are nice and secure. They're not going to go anywhere. And then just tuck the ends of the pipe cleaners forward. Now that's all on the back. Turn over. And now we're going to measure our poofs. And I'm going to measure my poofs on this one at 8 inches. You want to start to measure right where you tied down. So grab both. Pull them out and measure at eight inches. Give it a pinch. Then add a pipe cleaner. Wrap it around, pull it nice and secure to the back. Give a good twist. And then you're gonna apply that to the two bars in the center. Just wrap your pipe cleaners around the two bars. Pull it to the back and give a good twist or two. Pull together and then push forward. You'll put 10 of the poofs in each section and each section is between the two crossbars here. And you want to attach all of your poofs to the two bars in the center. Now it's really nice because you're doing uh, two poofs at a time. 
And once you get this down, this method goes nice and quick. And it's an easy method for a beginner. I'm going to be adding a lot of decorations and a lot of bright colors to this, so I didn't want my base to be bright. I just wanted it to be one of the main colors that I'm going to be using today. Now when choosing your mesh, you want to pull all your mesh either from the fall or from Halloween because the two are a little different. They're both orange, but the metallic strips are different. In Halloween, it's a dark orange metallic strip, and in fall, it's this one, a gold metallic stripe. So just make sure that you pay attention. You can mix the two, but you'll need three of each and use one roll of each as you're doing your wreath. I have attached two rolls of the deco mesh and that covers two sections on the wreath. The wreath has six sections, so you will need six rolls of mesh. I did have one extra bundle at the end, so I went ahead and added it. Um, sometimes you never know with Dollar Tree Mesh, you may have an extra bundle or you may have one less bundle, that's okay, no biggie. If you're short two bundles, go back to the first one and just move one over into the next section. You want to keep them as even as possible, that will keep the shape of your wreath even as well. But I'm really happy with how that's turning out. I'm going to continue to add my mesh and fill in the base of the wreath and then we'll come back and move forward and decorate. I have my base completed. Now once you get your mesh on, the only thing you need to do is go through and just separate the two pieces of mesh so that you get the full benefit of having two poofs for every poof. And that fills in your base nicely. Now this is a great method when using Dollar Tree Deco Mesh because you get little to no fraying on this wreath. Now this is a great method for beginners because you're not cutting the Deco Mesh. Once you get to this state where you've fluffed out your wreath and you have your base on, if you do find anything that's a little loose that might have been coming out from the sides of the mesh, just trim it off. Sometimes the sides of the mesh don't get fully fused and you'll have a little piece that will come off. Don't worry about it. Just trim anything that looks funky. With Dollar Tree, you never know with their mesh. Some mesh is better than others. Some are easier to work with than others. But with this method, you can use even the worst mesh from Dollar Tree and your wreath base will still come out absolutely beautiful. Here on the back, you can see that I've attached everything to the two bars in the center and I've tucked down my pipe cleaners. I don't cover the back of my wreaths because I think handmade wreaths should look handmade, but this way it keeps the back of your wreath looking nice and clean. And any of the ends of the pipe cleaners are pushed forward so you don't have any issues of them scratching a door. Now this is the sign that I've chosen to use. I went ahead and removed uh, the hanger, which was this little ribbon. It was stapled on the back. And then I don't really care for this little bow, so I've also removed that. You just want to be careful because as you can see, it will lift up some of the paper. I am going to glue something over that to cover it, so I'm not worried about it. And then this sign does have a good amount of glitter. All of the black that you see is all glittered. So to clean this up, what makes a good quick work is just one of the paint brushes. I have one that I only use for this and it really removes any of the loose glitter right away and makes your sign look nice and clean. I really do like that. Now to attach the sign to our wreath, we're going to need to add some pipe cleaners. Now normally the signs you get from Dollar Tree will have a hole uh, where they have the hanger. This one didn't, so we're going to be hanging it using just the pipe cleaners this time. I'm going to glue one right here to the top where the original hanger was. Just lay down a dollop of hot glue and place in your pipe cleaner.
and I'm going to add one more to either side down here at the bottom. You want to let this glue fully set up before you try to attach it to your wreath. I always like to go back and add a little bit more hot glue over the top just to make sure that they're nice and secure. We're going to work on our ribbon bundles now. I pulled out three different ribbons to use today. Now this one I think is absolutely gorgeous. I picked this up at Dollar Tree. It is one of their glitter orange ribbons. This came out of their fall section. Two and a half inches at nine feet. You will need one roll. Now this ribbon I ordered from craftoutlet.com. I really do like them. It only took about 10 days for me to get this, so I was really happy about that. I'll insert a photo of the item number for this ribbon. I really do like it. It is two and a half inches at 10 yards. It is 100% polyester, but I really do love the candy corns. And then I'm going to accent with this one. I also picked this up at Craft Outlet. I will also include a photo here of the item number. And this is one and a half inches at 10 yards. And I really do like this. It's glittery, but not too terribly glittery. I absolutely love it. And this ribbon is nice and easy to work with. It holds its shape and it's really nice. I've used it several times. It's by Expressions. Really nice ribbon. You'll want to cut six pieces of the white ribbon at 10 inches, six pieces of the candy corn ribbon at 12 inches, and six pieces of the glittered orange ribbon at 12 inches. Now I have my ribbon cut. I am dovetailing my ends on both my small ribbon and my large ribbon. And that's really easy to do. You just fold the two ends together like that. And then you cut from the fold to the ends. And I don't usually do too strong of a dovetail, usually half inch, no more than an inch. Just want to make the ends look a little pretty. To make our bundles, you'll need half a pipe cleaner and one piece of each ribbon. I'm going to start with the glitter ribbon in the back and then my candy corn ribbon on top. Find the center, and then you want to push up in the center, down, up, and down. You want the outside rim of your ribbon to be down. Pinch and then do it again on the other side, and pinch it in the center. You're going to do the same thing with the smaller ribbon. Now remember this is a little bit shorter. And I wanted this to be shorter so it'll stand up more in the center. So do a little scrunch there. And put that in the middle. Wrap your pipe cleaner around to the back. I always like to pull down. I can get a nice tight grip and then give a twist or two. And you just want to separate the large ribbon and it's easier if you go right down to where they come together and just kind of pull side to side and go to the other one and do the same thing and you just kind of want to lift up and curl those ends out Just much easier to kind of play with your ribbon bundles here in your hand than once they're on the wreath. That way if you're having any issues of them laying right, you can really uh, adjust it much easier this way. And then I want my white here to stand up 
a little bit more so that's why it's shorter plus this ribbon is a little bit stiffer and like I said it'll do exactly what you want it to do so I think that is really cute this is what your bundle should look like and you will need to make seven bundles let's get our sign attached now I like my signs to sit up on top of my wreath I like them to really stand out now this one I think I'm gonna go at a little bit of an angle here yeah I think I like that and then to attach this all you do is you take your pipe cleaners you move the mesh aside to get down to the wire frame and then you attach it to the wire frame now you can attach it anywhere on the wire frame that you need to to get your sign to sit the way that you want now when you initially attach it don't attach it really tight you want to make sure you get your placement down before you tighten it down now to cover my little uh, boo-boo up here where the bow was I'm going to put one of these cute little uh, spider rings now you get a package of 10 and they come with five in purple and five in orange I'm only going to be using the orange today now they are rings so you'll need to cut the ring part off and they come off really easy just a regular pair of scissors and there you go Now the reason why I chose to do a little spider is because there are little uh, webbings and a couple little spiders already here on the sign. So then I can place this spider here and it'll cover up my boo-boo and I think that will look absolutely adorable. I didn't want to put another bow here because I really want to show off the sign. My ribbon is all going to go around. So I think that looks absolutely adorable. Now I will attach the other four spiders once I get all my ribbon and my other embellishments on. Next I'm going to place my ribbon bundles and I'm just going to kind of play with them and find the placement of where I want to put them. Once I have that down, you do the same thing just like you attach the sign. You move your mesh apart until you can get down to that wire frame and you attach it to the wire frame. And you can attach it again wherever you need to to get that bundle to sit where you want it to. Just pull your pipe cleaners down, give it a good twist or two, and make sure to tuck your pipe cleaners. But look how pretty does that look. Very nice. I'm going to go ahead and place in the rest of my ribbon bundles. Now I really do like to put my ribbon in after I've done my deco mesh because you use a lot less ribbon and then you can strategically place them so you get the biggest bang for your buck. I have all seven of my ribbon bundles in and I'm really happy with their placement. I found these adorable little candy corn picks from Dollar Tree. Now they had two to choose from. They had one that looks like this where you get three of the smaller candy corns. And then they also had this one where you got a larger candy corn. I'm going to be using two of the larger and one with the three on this wreath. Now you want to remove any of the tags that are on there. And then you also want to uh, trim your stem here doesn't need to be that long I'm gonna leave about three inches
Now before you glue in your picks, just play with their placement. Look and see where you would like to put them. And remember they are on wire, so if you need to bend them a little bit, feel free to. Now when placing your ribbon bundles, keep in mind uh, where you want to place your little candy corns. So you can leave a little extra space for them. So just play with their placement until you're happy with where you have them. Kind of change the angles, that kind of thing. Just play with it. Once you find that you like that and you're happy with where they are, just use some hot glue to glue them in. I think that looks absolutely adorable. Okay, I'm going to glue in the rest of my candy corn and I'm also going to glue in the rest of my little spiders here and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. And there you go, I'm all done. I'm really happy with the end result. I have all of my candy corn and my little spiders all glued in. I think it looks absolutely fabulous. Now you can see there's a lot of color and a lot of stuff going on. That's why I wanted to keep my base a solid color because I knew I was going to add a lot to it and you weren't going to see very much of it. So I'm really pleased with this. I absolutely love candy corn decor during Halloween. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and show me some love in the comments. And if you know anyone who would enjoy my content, please share it with them. Thanks again for stopping by. You know it's always a pleasure to see you. I hope everyone is staying happy, healthy, and strong. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.